Welcome to the Buddy Pet Podcast. We talk everything animal health and wellness with our very own head of head of animal health and vet, Dr. Elsa Rutherford. Welcome back. Thanks for having me again. All right. Today we're going to talk about itchy skin. So let's start it off. Why is my dog so itchy? <laughs> Well, it's, uh, it sounds like an easy question, but yeah, there's lots of reasons why dogs can get itchy. Um, obviously, as you know, one of the, the most common reasons is allergies. And again, within that, there's all sorts of different possible allergies, which I'm sure we'll talk about at a later date. But um, allergies would be the most common, the common reason. Awesome. So then why is the skin so itchy and red? So allergies or any kind of irritation to the skin causes inflammation and then that causes the itch and often in animals um, really what we see is a lot of self-trauma so they get itchy and they can't stop scratching so the animals themselves cause a lot of the, the damage and the redness to the skin because it's already inflamed and itchy. So in terms of itchy skin you, you mentioned allergies being a big one what other causes are there? Um, so infections would be another another common one so infections often actually come on top of allergies. So you, the allergies cause an itchy skin and then you get broken skin. And that's when um, things like bacteria and yeast can, can get in there and cause secondary infections. And then the other really common one in our pets would be parasites, you know, so fleas and ticks and, and sort of mosquito bites, those kind of things which will definitely cause you know, itchy skin. Um, and, you know, generally if, yeah, especially near the coast in, in Australia where, where the majority of people are things like drying out of the skin. Um, so people that take their dogs to the beach all the time and they're in salt water and if they don't wash them off afterwards just the salt on the skin can cause irritation um, and then cats we see a lot more kind of solar dermatitis so um, exposure to the sun basically and you see it in dogs as well if they lie you know, a lot of dogs will lie on their backs with their bellies exposed where there's less hair um, and that can cause you know skin irritation as well yeah of course that actually makes a lot of sense so what are ways that you can soothe this itchy and red skin in your dog so we look at it from sort of two aspects really so things you can do from the inside and things you can do from the outside. So outside we're talking about sort of creams and balms and oils to sort of, if it's smaller patches of skin, you can use sort of topical medications. Um, obviously shampoos and conditioners, and we're talking really more dogs than cats in that, in that situation. Anyone that's got a cat will know shampooing your cat, not so easy. Um, though some people do it, um, <laughs> but certainly yeah, shampoos and conditioners can be really, really helpful to kind of really soothe that skin. And then things from the inside, you're looking at really changing diets, you're looking at supplements, that kind of thing um, to boost what's called the skin barrier. That's the natural kind of um, body's defense really to stop allergens um, getting in from the outside. Um, and yeah, certainly changing diets supplements you know, especially with the omega-3 fatty acids can really help boost that barrier and then ultimately you know you look at medications and that kind of thing which I think we'll, we'll talk about later. Yeah yeah actually nailed that next question so in terms of curing this itchy skin what would you recommend? <laughs> look it very much depends on the cause it's really really important because because symptoms of um itchy skin and allergies all really overlap quite you know, quite a lot. It's hard from the outside just to say, this is what's going on. So it's really important that if you have a, an animal with itchy skin, you, you try and find out what the cause is because the number one thing is if there's an allergy to something, if you can avoid it, then your problem goes away. So we see that certainly with some kind of food allergies where you find out what your animal's allergic to, um, eliminate that from their diet and then they, they the symptoms completely go away often though that's not possible so particularly with our environmental allergens you, you can't avoid a lot of these things so um, you're really looking at um, you know, layering up options layering up things that are doing the least harm basically um, a lot of the time we'll do food elimination trials so we'll have an animal on a you know hypoallergenic diet or a novel protein diet for a period of time to see if it's a food allergy so we're talking usually eight weeks plus um, of eliminating all of the normal dietary components um, and then reintroducing them to see if if they've got food allergies um, 
sometimes hypoallergenic diets can help anyway, even if the allergy problem isn't a food allergy. So foods definitely, um, as I said, shampoos, conditioners, um, supplements. So the fatty acids are hugely important. The omega-3 fatty acids in particular are hugely important to, you know, to build those natural defenses. And then medications, there's all sorts of different things that we can, we can use. You know, so we can, steroids are the classic medication that are used for itchy skin. Um, they work really, really well in most animals, but long-term steroids have a lot of negative side effects. So there are newer drugs that act like steroids that um, don't have the side effects, they're just more expensive. Um, and then there's, there's some really novel treatments these days like um, uh, antibodies against, there's an injection that your animal has um, of an antibody against the inflammatory proteins in the body, which is quite interesting because it's not a drug, so there's no real side effects. Um, and if it works in your, um, in your dog, it works really, really well. So that's a really good new treatment. And then from the more alternative side of things, um, you're looking at, as I said, the omega-3 fatty acids, definitely, but you can look at things like turmeric, which is a natural anti-inflammatory as well. And there's lots of other herbs that will potentially work for some animals to reduce inflammation from the inside. Great. So what should you give a dog that is suffering from itchy skin? So number one thing is to, to look at the diet. So um, as I said, novel protein, so really... Um, to have a true food allergy, um, an animal needs to have been exposed to that food for a period of time. So um, it'll be something, if it's a food allergy, it'll be something that's been in their diet for a while in general, not something that you've just started feeding. So usually it takes a bit of time to develop a food allergy. So um, food is really important. So most people, the advice would be to go on to what's called a novel protein diet, um, which means changing their food completely to something they've not been exposed to before, stick to that diet exclusively for eight to 12 weeks, see if the symptoms go away, then reintroduce you know, the, the original diet and see, you know, does, does it come back? Um, so changing diet is hugely, hugely important for, for animals with itchy skin. Yeah, so what food should you avoid feeding your dog uh, with dry itchy skin? Look, that's a that's a difficult question because you know unless it's a true food allergy you know there's, there's lots of um lots of things banded around um you know that are sort of extrapolated from the human side of things you know um, there's a lot of grain-free diets and things out there for animals these days and it's not really been proven to be um to be necessary in in most animals you know if they have a true food allergy then it's important um, but it's it's about feeding a really a natural diet. You know, you don't want to, same as us, you don't want too many additives, you don't want too much processed food. Um, and if they do have a true problem, then you really need to look at changing to a diet that has a, a novel protein. Um, and there's lots of diets commercially available out there, but also you can do home cooked versions, but they need to be, it's really important that they're still really balanced. So um, it needs to be conducted in conjunction with um, like a veterinary nutritionist really to get that initial sort of um, recipe, I suppose. Yeah, of course. I mean, you got human nutritionists and you have to have vet nutritionists as well. Absolutely, just... yeah. <laughs> so how about people that want to take on some home remedies for their dogs? What are some home remedies that we could use? There's not that many things that are sort of proven from a scientific paper basis. It's not to say that things don't work. Um, it's just that they haven't necessarily got the, the, the real kind of scientific um, rigor as far as um, papers and things are concerned. But you know, if it's mild allergies, um, you're definitely, you know, as you said, some of those boosting the omega-3 fatty acids is definitely something you can do at home. It's really, really safe. Um, there's lots of products available that have, you know, these the, the good level of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid content. So you can supplement your diet, your pet's diet with those. Um, with those kind of things, you, you need to do it for at least two to four weeks to really see any you know, any effect. You're not going to see an effect within one to two days. Um, you can use things like you know, like turmeric, as we said, um, it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So again, it does no harm. You're looking at things that will do no harm. Um, and then topically, you, know, you can use products that are that are natural. You know, things like pawpaw cream, hemp seed oil cream, that kind of thing um, on small areas that are itchy. And if you have little 
regular small rashes that are you know you can get too easily you can use topical things like that at home great so in terms of supplements what are the best supplements to give your dog with itchy skin it, all, all, it's all about the essential fatty acids you know that really is one of the prime ways that we can help with the skin barrier from from the inside out and that skin barrier is so so important particularly for environmental allergens you know environmental allergens which are the cause of something called atopic dermatitis which we will definitely come to later it's quite a big topic in itself um, so environmental allergens come either through the skin um, and they get in through the skin barrier because it's not formed properly or they're inhaled. That would be the normal kind of roots for those. And by supplementing um, the omega-3 fatty acids, it really helps to tighten that skin barrier. So stops letting allergens in essentially. Um, so that would be the mainstay of, of things to do from, you know, from a natural point of view. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been reading a lot of things just about with itchy skin and dogs, things like hemp seed oil, coconut oil, olive oil, fish oil, aloe, like salt water, baking soda. I guess that's a lot of like home remedies. That's quite a lot of things, but yep. do, the, do these things help for the most part? Um, certainly, um, like coconut oil is something that can be used topically um, to soothe, um, but from a point of view of ingesting it, so actually um, oral supplementation of coconut oil, that's been shown to have, it's quite high calorie because it's quite high fat content and there's a lot of saturated fats. So it's not so good from an ingestion point of view. Um, so coconut oil, yes, topically, probably no to putting it actually in the diet in huge quantities. Um, from a point of view, there's things like apple cider vinegar that people use. Again, there's no sort of hard fact your know, hard sort of truth for that it's again it's not to say it doesn't help but it's certainly there's no proof for that um same with baking soda it it can change it actually can change the ph of the skin in a way that is not always a good thing so you've just got to be really careful with some of these things that seem really innocuous mm -hmm. um they can actually do more harm than good. And, and it's one thing that's really interesting to know and important to know actually is that dog's skin is a really different pH to humans. So things that may work for humans aren't necessarily gonna work for, for dogs. And same with like shampoos and conditioners. If you do use a human shampoo or conditioner for the odd time, it won't be a problem. But if you're doing it on an ongoing basis, you're going to you're going to change the pH of that dog's skin and actually potentially cause problems. So same with a lot of these home remedies um, that are on the internet. They're really a lot of them are for humans rather than than animals. And we've also got the problem with animals that if you put things on their skin, they will lick them off. And so you've got to be, you've got to be mindful of that too. You know, the cats hate anything on their skin. And if they lick it off, you know, they'll froth at the mouth, that kind of thing. It's really quite distressing for them. Um, things like essential oils, you've got to be really careful within cats as well. So you, there's some really, you, know, you can actually do a lot of harm with some of these things. Yeah, that's actually now a great segue because now we're going to talk about washing your dog. <laughs> uh, so what should you wash your dog with that has itchy skin? Um, so dogs um, need to be washed with um, obviously all natural. It's, it's best to use an all natural shampoo or conditioner. So same as us, you know, paraben free, et cetera, sulfate free, those same kind of things apply to animals. Um, it's important to note though that they have a really different pH to humans. So it needs to be an animal specific shampoo or a dog specific shampoo or conditioner um, that's not going to dry their skin out, not going to change the pH. Um, so there's lots of things available, but the most important thing is to look for really all natural ingredients. So what, what would you say would be the best shampoo to use for your dog then? If they don't have a problem, so it varies depending on if, if they have um, an itchy skin problem, then it would be slightly different to if they don't. If it's just a standard shampoo, um, you know, the, the hemp seed oil shampoos are really nice. They, they, give a, they don't lather necessarily in the same way as some of the shampoos that have a lot of harsh chemicals in them, but they will leave a really nice, shiny, silky coat that's you know, not damaging that skin. If your dog has um, a problem, so if they have an infection, then you may need a medicated shampoo. And those generally, um, they're often on prescription, those, those shampoos, because they can do more harm than, than good. Um, 
if your problem with your dog is more of just an inflammatory um, condition, like an itchy dog without having any signs of infection, then there's lots of natural ingredients in shampoos, um, such as um, colloidal oatmeal, rose hip, um, aloe vera that can actually help soothe, you know, soothe that itchy skin. So here's a question that a lot of viewers will probably love to know the answer to, but how often should you bathe your pet? <laughs> it's a question we get asked a lot, actually, and it depends on whether they have a specific skin issue at that time, and it also depends a little bit on their lifestyle. So um, on average, um, once a week would be a around, you know, okay for most, most dogs. If they have a skin issue, um, so if they have um, inflamed skin, then you might need to be washing them twice a week with a, a sensitive shampoo. Um, and again, those things, um, often they need to be lathered up and left on for a few minutes to, to give them the best efficacy of those. It's important to note though that lifestyle is also um, a factor in this. So if your dog goes to the beach every day and they go swimming and they've got salt water and sand all in them, it doesn't mean you can't rinse them off. You still need to rinse your pet when they come home from, from the beach um, to get all of that salt and sand water out. Um, otherwise you, they'll dry their skin out, they'll get irritation from that, but it doesn't mean you have to use a shampoo every day. So just rinse rinse every time they've, you know, if they jump in a river, anything like that, um, rinse them, but only wash them like twice a week. Great. That's a great piece of advice. Thank you for that. So that wraps up Itchy Skin this week. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome.